Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Deborah Morgan. This is part two of my interview with former Duke men's basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski, recorded earlier in January. If you haven't heard that episode yet, check it out. In this episode, Coach K talks about motivation, the Final Four, and his dog, Coach. Take a listen. Does it get confusing with the name Coach around your house? <laughs> no, I was never called Coach. I was At called home. a lot of different names in my house. Uh, some of them were nice, uh, but never, n- never Coach. Uh, so I was, you know, <laughs> when we got coach at our basketball banquet in April, last April, uh, we uh, were surprised. Uh, In fact, uh, the lady who is a great dog trainer for us, uh, uh, she was talking to some people and she was with coach and and, she says, you mean a 75-year-old couple (laughs) got a lab puppy? Are they nuts? And... uh, uh, but he, he's really grown. He's 85 pounds now. He's really a good athlete. Uh, I love him, and uh, we're, we're happy we got him. You know, he had a thing called separation anxiety to begin with, and it can be a, a really bad thing, and our trainer and our vet were, are fantastic, and they were able to get him out of it. And uh, But it's... It, 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 it fills your house with life, uh, uh, he, and he's a silver lab. Uh, he looks more, a lot more like uh, Cameron, who was our chocolate, uh, than blue was our yellow and defense was our black lab. Is he your buddy, though, now? I mean, yeah, you said you love him. Yeah, you know, because I'm on the road a lot, and sometimes when we go, we have to leave him mm. with our trainer. Uh, we're still developing that that relationship, but he knows his home. He knows, uh, and you know, he has some responsibility too. So, uh, but it's a good responsibility. Good. Um, take me back to the the last season. I used to watch you and Mickey. You would it, you would always look for her like at halftime or after a game or before a game. You'd be with her. But I felt like this last season that you coached, you were always wanting her by your side. How important is it to have Mickey there with you? Well, this last season, I, I would credit Mickey more than me with it. I think she made a commitment that a lot of times we didn't, she didn't go on the road, partly because of <laughs> crowds, a lot of them are. They were not nice. A little hostile. and uh, Anyway, it, it wasn't worth it. But uh, this year... Um, pretty much she traveled and it was the last go around and uh, so she as close as she's been all the time she I think became even closer and I think she wanted uh, to be there for me if I when I needed that and I usually needed it and uh, so that was a that was a, a good thing you know the uh, the last year, uh, because of the succession plan, like we didn't do this to, to have like a long farewell. <laughs> like I don't need that. Like, but the people who want to knock you or whatever, they're going to say whatever. But uh, we came up with a succession plan, you know. And to me, having a couple great recruiting years, by the time I stepped down was more important than, uh, like, if I made the decision at the end of the year, we would not have that recruiting year. And John would not have had the ability to be, to learn more uh, during that time. It It was more of a business decision, but then it became, you know, where's Coach K gonna be? And what gift do we have to give them? <laughs> and we appreciate all that. Don't get me wrong. But uh, the, the purpose was a business decision. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think that worked out very, very well. And uh, so, you know, my family has traveled when we won Olympic gold medals. Mm-hmm. And they've been in, God bless them, man. They've been 
in so many situations where they're in support and feel pressure and want us want me to do well and uh, and you know I, I've appreciated that I, I really think it made us even closer as a family and uh, and so uh, but Mickey's been the key component with that uh, uh, because she's yeah, I really had a lot of times tunnel vision in preparation. And sometimes she says, you know, get out of the tunnel. You need to look at this. I said, I can't get out of the tunnel very long here <laughs> or else we're going to, we may not end up in a good, good spot. She's been a great partner. And, you know, we've been together for 53 years. And uh, graduation day, West Point, we got married. And, and uh for us, we knew right away it was going to be a team. It, it, it couldn't be an individual career, you know, that uh, she was going to be an integral part of, of uh, our career. That's so wonderful. It's always wonderful for mm. me to see you all together. Thank you. Um, you made it to the Final Four, so that was an exciting part of your last season for right. sure. Um, how, were you disappointed that it fell short? Yeah, because you want to win the national championship. Uh, you know, getting to a Final Four is like mecca for a coach, a program. And uh, because you win, you, when you go to the Final Four, there are four champions going to the Final Four of each region. And uh, to do that, and the run we had uh, to do that was outstanding. You know, when we lost in the Final Four to North Carolina, you know, a lot of people, they, you know, well, I'm glad people put a lot about North Carolina and Duke rivalry. But the biggest disappointment for me is not playing a national championship game. You know, whoever we would have lost to <laughs> would have been a di disappointment uh, because that's, that's the thing you want. We've won five of them. We had a chance uh, to play for our sixth. And, uh, and we're denied that by an outstanding team and a great game. Would you have changed anything about your coaching that day? Probably one of the officials <laughs> uh, I, would have ch I would have changed. Uh, the, no, the, you know, the game is, it, 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 it's always moving in a number of different directions. Uh, in that particular game, you know, marks, fouls. And I'm not saying they didn't foul. Really had a, an impact on, on us. And we were right there, and uh, we missed, and they hit, and they won. And sometimes it's just that, that simple. It's not like a kid was so bad or you made horrendous decisions or whatever. Uh, I, thought, I thought it was an epic game. And I said something after the game that it, I've lived my whole life. Uh, uh, it's an honor to be in the arena. Not many people are in the arena. And when you're in the arena, you're not in the arena alone, whether it's an individual competition or a team competition. And so if you are in that arena, you better respect the other team or person in the arena. And when the event, when that contest is done, handle it that way. And I, I couldn't be more proud of the arena I was in that night and the, and the team that we shared it with. The team we shared it with, we've shared in epic games for decades. You know, it was only appropriate and one of them, one of us was going to win. They did. And so congratulations and, uh, you know, but uh, I love that it ended not obviously we would have won the national. I've loved that it ended at that level. It didn't end where we didn't make the tournament or we got upset or, you know, I was proud of my guys. They were balling like crazy afterwards. And uh, that, that made me feel good because that means it meant, it meant that much. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Coach K and his thoughts on that last home game at Cameron Indoor Stadium against Carolina.
Welcome back to the WRL Daily Download as I continue my conversation with former Duke men's basketball coach, Mike Krzyzewski. I wanted to talk to you about motivation yeah. of players because I've heard you talk about this, especially mm. with NIL right now, and what motivates those young men to be out there on the court and play at the top level. Mm. Do, you, do you find that that's lacking or that you have to do more teaching to get them to appreciate being in that arena. Yeah, you know, um, motivation is a great thing. You know, hopefully a player will bring a certain level of their own motivation. If you are the only one who is providing the motivation, that's not going to work out to the level that it should. And we t- I talk to each one of my guys about that. I'm going to be enthusiastic about coaching you. You have to be enthusiastic about being coached and working. And then, boy, I wonder where our enthusiasm will go. And uh, with motivation, there's individual and collective motivation. And so for individual, I need to know who you are. You need to let me in. And you may be ultra confident. You may be afraid a little bit of making mistakes. You may, it, it varies. So to say this is the one way to motivate a player is wrong. It's personalized. Same thing with the team, you know, does the team have leadership already? What is the personality or does it have a personality yet? You know, and uh, so to me, it's incredibly interesting. It's essential. I mean, we did it with our U.S. teams. You know, Kobe Bryant, uh, who I coached twice in uh, 12 and in 8 and 12 for the Olympics in Beijing and London, Uh, Jamie, my daughter, wrote a book on the 2008 team, uh, the gold standard. And Kobe told her, he says, you know, I I get paid to play. I I get paid a lot. And your dad and his staff tries to motivate us every day. He said, it's such a good thing. And so I think people should not assume that someone who is talented or is really up there doesn't need something more and uh, or to help them and they will give it back and uh, you know I I love that aspect of teaching and leadership and uh, you know there's motivation and there's inspiration you know inspiration a lot of times we would do things with tape to try to put them in the moment like for the gold medal games in our five champ, our five gold medals, three Olympics, two worlds. We, we hit on a thing with Marvin Gaye singing the national anthem in the 1980s. And we showed different, our guys in different scenes there, there in that. And uh, we showed it at one practice for the 2008 team. And I said, come on over here. I get chills thinking about because, and we had a TV on the side. And I said, I want, this is going to be our fight song. It's going to be played before every game. And you're going to feel really proud about playing for the United States. And boom, that goes on. And these guys were like that. And so before we got on the bus to go to a game uh, for those gold medals, that was one one of the things we did it's uh those moments i mean that's inspiration they're already motivated mm-hmm. inspiration takes that motivation mm-hmm. to another level i i know we're we're running out of time um i also wanted to ask you what ring you're wearing right now oh well let me show oh, the, two. The, let me show okay. you these uh these two rings i never take off they're my wedding ring mm-hmm. and my wedding ring is curved a little bit to fit my West Point ring. And my West Point ring used to have a black stone and I did take it off at one time because the stone broke. And Mickey had, excuse me, the Duke stone put in it. So it's my three families, my own family, West Point family, and Duke. Uh, The ring I'm wearing today is one of my Olympic rings. This is from the uh, redeem team, uh, 2000, 2008. And sometimes I'll, I always wear these, but I don't even know why I wore it today, but, uh, sometimes you just put it on and it makes you think Mm -hmm. 
you know, of uh, that team. Uh, you know, when we uh, talk about big wins and big losses, uh, uh, a tough loss for me was uh, my last game in Cameron. It was built to be uh, way beyond what it should be, and about 100 of our former players were back, and, uh, and we had already uh, clinched the regular season. And so we still want to beat Carolina and whatever, and it's the last game. And uh, uh, there was so much hoopla about the game. And uh, I fell into a little bit of a trap, not a little bit of a trap, but a trap that I should not have fallen into and in that uh, we were prepared, but I didn't prepare them to the level that they should have been prepared, especially you're going to be in this, you're going to feel that. You know, I could have helped them. That atmosphere was, was when different. we talk about epic, that was epic. Yeah, and besides, North Carolina was great, and they are good. <laughs> They're really good. And, and then adding the pressure, especially late in the game when it was a close game. Mm. And after the game, I, I, I was, uh, did what human beings do. Uh, we, I felt that I was let down by, by the, like I would not have let down my coach and all that. And that was the wrong reaction. And then a lot of times when I don't give the right reaction to a team after watching tape or spending time that night or you stay up most of the night, you know, sometime like three in the morning it hits you like, all right, you are an idiot. It's all on you. What a, what a learning experience. You know, again, you lost that game, but there's still more to, more to go. And then I had to try to get my team back from what I put them in. The loss put them in one spot, but I put them in a worse spot. And it took a while. It took us, you know, we didn't play that well in the ACC tournament. We almost won it, but by the NCAAs, we were back. And going through that experience made us tougher, but I would have rather not have gone through <laughs> that experience. You know, and it shows that you coach 1,600 games or more, you win a lot, and you still make mistakes. And, uh, and you should be accountable for them and responsible for them. And, uh, and then you learn from and move on. Like, I, I don't look back and say, man, Oliver, come on, man. <laughs> There's a lot. I, then I should be thinking about all the ones we won. Right. You know, it's, I... Talk about human nature. Usually human nature is to focus on the, yeah, the bad, the loss. But then, then, Deborah, what I do is I have a thing called next play. Like, let's get on to the next play. Learn from the play before. And there was a lot to learn from that. And then let's see how we can make it work going forward. Would you have rather won that last game in Cameron or been at the Final Four? And, no. I, and both is not an answer. No, well, don't, you sound like my wife and my daughters. <laughs> yeah, I want to win them all. You know, I want to win them all. Because, you know, but if had I, you not lost that game in Cameron, do you think you would have still been in the Final Four? I don't know that. Yeah, but it's a good point because we, we had a crushing defeat. And then we responded. It took us a while, and it made us better for the tournament. I agree with that. I would have liked to have had the leadership challenge of winning and getting us tougher and still getting to the, the final mm -hmm. four. So I'm not going to answer your question, okay. I guess is what I'm saying. Fair enough. <laughs> Thanks so much to Mike Krzyzewski for that wonderful conversation. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to hear about his next play. You can watch my TV interview with Coach K on WREL.com. Thanks for listening to the WREL Daily Download and making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WREL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting in your inbox every morning with triangle news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com newsletter.